Good morning. We're at the physics video lecture once again. P side 168, video lecture 36. We've been talking about electricity and magnetism. I have a bunch of demonstrations today. I'll try to set this up for us. Um, not that many lectures left. This is 36. We have 36, 37, 38, 39. And the last one after all is going to be review. Good. So we've been talking about electricity. I've mentioned magnetism. So today we're going to look at magnetism because there's just an essential connection. Now, start reminding ourselves of electricity. What do we have? We have charge positive and negative and the force we have currents and then we have the power formula so currents I power um, voltage delta V I delta V um, I may not have mentioned the electric field but I'll make up for it because I'm going to talk about the magnetic field. Um, electric field. So by discussing the magnetic field I'll be able to come back to talking about the electric field. So yeah we have this and there's so far no relation to magnets so the first thing I'm going to do is just demonstrate some magnets. So let's let the number things right. So this is the first point here. Second point is magnets. Uh, good. So what do I have here? I have a few demo objects. Magnets are always sticking together. Okay, so here I have a long magnet. We put one on the end that's red and one's blue to indicate different poles, but we're not so interested in that. If you have magnets like this, you can play with them. You get that attractive force, you turn one of them around and you feel repulsion. Okay. So you get attraction and repulsion. Okay. So put them back together. Same thing here. There's attraction, but if I turn this around, there's repulsion. Now the interesting thing about these magnets, this one's kind of broken, is that there's an attractive side and a re I'll do this, you can do this as well. So here I have attraction. If I take that same one, okay, let's do this. So there's repulsion. If I take that same side over here, it's gonna be attraction. Now, so again, repulsion, same side, attraction. I can split this magnet in half, okay? Attraction, turn it around, repulsion, okay? And I can take that half of a half, split it in half again. I'm never able to just isolate an attractive or a repulsive side. No matter how much I split them, I get repulsion and attraction. And finally, you know, I can take the last step here, turn it around, repulsion. Okay, so if you ever have some little magnets you can play around with, this is an interesting discovery to make. We say these magnets have a north and a south pole and we can never isolate a north or south pole. If I were to saw this thing in half, I would get the same effect. I'll never be able to isolate an attractive versus a repulsive side. That's different than electric charge. Electric charge, we really can isolate a plus and a minus. In a magnet, the plus and minus are actually called north and south, north and south pole, and they always come together. So what's the connection to a cup, or well, I've mentioned this term north and south. So the north pole of this magnet would be if I hang it from a thread and it turns and turns and then stops and it's aiming you know, 
at magnetic north. Okay, so the Earth itself has magnetic properties. So I'm going to summarize these first discussion points. So magnets um, north and south pole. That's the first point. The second point is like poles repel, unlike poles attract. So there's some relation to charge seemingly, or some similarity, some analogy. Like poles repel, unlike poles attract. And that's the one thing you've, you know, if you've ever played around with magnets, you've noticed. Okay? You've got that repulsion and that attraction depending upon which side you face towards each other. Good. Now, there's something called the magnetic field. I mentioned it, I haven't drawn it yet. Well, electric field also exists. We're going to talk about the magnetic field next. Actually, you know, since I have the North and South Pole, we should mention Earth magnetism. Back during the age of exploration, you know, scientists took magnets all around the Earth and measured the direction of the magnetic influence locally. So Earth magnitude, by the magnetism, these are all good things to get images of for your book. I should start writing that down right now. If you just look up earth magnetism, you should be able to get some excellent images. What I want to show you next is these compass needles. So compass needles. This is going to be a demonstration. So here I have, and I'm going to bring it closer to the camera, I have an array of compass needles. Okay, They're all lined up. I'm going to bring a really big, um, powerful magnet into the picture, and uh, we'll take it from there. So. Okay, that's a powerful magnet. Let's see. Good enough. To demonstrate its strength, I'm just going to throw pieces of metal at it and it catches them. Very powerful. Now, to demonstrate what we call a magnetic field, I hope this works. Take a look again. This should work. So these are those compass needles, and you're going to see them move as I move this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate the shape. So think of the lines connecting those compass needles. Now watch them turn. Back to the board. So what did we have there? I'm going to draw a picture of what we had. So this demonstration, we have this very powerful magnet. Um, and I'll go ahead and draw it you know, like this. So 
but what you noticed was that there was a very strong magnetic force between these two poles. These are, say, the north and south poles of that magnet. Now, what did we see with the compass needles? How about I use another color? We had this kind of pattern if we drew lines connecting those compass needles. So those lines would be referred to as magnetic field lines. And what you saw when I carried it over to here, the compass needle actually was oriented flat. And as I carried that um, set of compass needles around, if you look closely, and you can of course rewind, you'll see that that needle actually does a complete 360 degrees, turns a complete 360 degrees. So I did this demonstration, and what it was showing you was what's called the magnetic field And we're going to abbreviate that the B field. Nice way to talk about it. It is a vector field, so we could actually put a vector on top as well. The magnetic field was being shown by those compass needles that were oriented along the direction of what we call a magnetic field. So you take any point in space close to this big magnet, and the compass needle will orient itself in a certain way. And that direction is the direction of the field. So this, yeah. So my next point in this presentation will be the, uh, we're going to call it the field of a magnetic dipole. Field of a magnetic dipole. That's some technical talk, but what we're really talking about is a magnet. Imagine a bar now with a north and a south pole. And I'm going to draw as lines what that compass, uh, array of compass needles did. The magnetic field of a dipole will go like this, it'll be symmetric. And the fact that that's enough, right? The fact that the compass needle did a full 360 degrees means that the field orientation leaves the North Pole and enters the South Pole. So these field lines go around like this and you can put arrows on them. So the rule is the field leaves the North Pole and enters the South Pole. And one of these field lines, if I took the compass needle along that line there, it would do the complete rotation as I showed you in the demonstration. So that's the field of a magnetic dipole, dipole right? That's the B field. And if you go back to the earth magnetism idea, it turns out the earth itself has the field of a magnetic dipole which is very interesting. Where is the magnet? Okay. But uh, people take their compass needles around the Earth, and then the orientation not only points towards magnetic north, it has an up and down declination as well. OK, so we've got the field of a magnetic dipole. Um, let me do another field. You know, that was the outside the outside field of this thing. If that was north and south, right? So what I demonstrated by moving that array of compass needles was essentially this property, but there's also a property in between those uh, poles of the magnet. So let's go ahead and look at that. And when I threw that chunk of metal at the magnet, that's what you saw, right? It just lined up in between. So, four, five, six. Between the poles of uh, magnets.
magnets plural. So between the poles of you know two or more magnets, let's go ahead and draw this. So imagine we have a north, a south, a north and a south pole of two magnets. Then we're going to get the field lines going from north to south. Okay. Just like they leave the north pole up there and enter the south pole. So between two magnets, we can end up with a very strong magnetic field. And it'll be uniform um, and you know all pointing the same direction. So that was also demonstrated, like I said, by me throwing a chunk of metal at that magnet and it just grabbed it right in between. So we have that as well. So that's the section just purely on the magnetic field. And like I said, you want to get some images. Um, so seven. just for your notebook, we want images of um, earth magnetism. magnetic dipole field. Because what you'll do is you'll get some higher quality imagery of exactly what I'm drawing here. The magnetic dipole field. And then you'll see the earth magnetism and the dipole field are going to look very similar. So that'll be a really interesting juxtaposition. Okay. Having just talked purely about um, magnetic fields. I'm going to briefly talk about electric fields. And basically, your positive charge, and we're going to get asked for some images of this as well. I'll put a third point in there. Electric fields, you know, you've got a positive charge with field lines away and you have a negative charge with field lines towards, okay? And because positive and negative, um, or because field vectors, fields are vectors, they add like arrows. So you also have the electric dipole field It's just to relate these concepts. You have a plus and a minus for the electric dipole field. You get something very similar to the magnetic dipole field, namely, it goes from plus to minus, and you know it has this curvature to it. And that comes just from adding these two individual types of fields. So let's put this on our list of images we also want to get electric dipole field. Okay. So that's pretty much for this pure phenomenon. And you know we've got attraction and repulsion in both cases. What we want now is the relation between electricity and magnetism. Up until now, there's no relation to them. There's some analogy, but in fact, there's a lot of difference. But there's a strong relation between the two that we'll talk about next. So let's, and I'll show you a couple more demonstrations along these lines here. and magnetism.
And uh, the way I'm going to set it up is this. The first two laws are the stuff we've already discussed. So let's just say electricity and uh, it's and the electric field. Okay. And now we've already discussed magnetism and the magnetic field. So at this stage they're separate. That's the point I'm making. And the B field for short. Now the third one is where it starts, so I'm going to do a demonstration where the relation between the two starts. So let's see here, let's get rid of this. Okay, yeah, uh, wish me luck. I'm going to try, <clears throat> try a couple demonstrations here. Okay, what I'm going to do is set up an electric current through this wire here. Okay, so we've got this wire, long straight wire, and clip it here and here. So if I pull a switch, let's see what we're seeing here. Okay, good. So I've got a big switch here and I can get a current going through that wire. Let me go ahead and pan over here. There's my switch. And I just sent a current through the wire. What I'm going to do is put some iron filings on this thing. Just sprinkle them as if I were cooking something. Okay. And I'm going to run a current through that wire and give those filings a tap. get there. Not much visible through the camera. Let's bring this closer. Good. Okay, that faint pattern there is a circular pattern. So those iron filings have lined up in the form of a circle. Now I, I have a stronger effect, but that's the basic one. I'm gonna go ahead and throw those away. <clears throat> okay. Place it 
回なんですけど OK the effect gets stronger but the circular pattern of iron filings indicates that they're lining up like little compass needles so let's see do we have contact here so this one here I have to do a little more carefully you know sprinkle iron filings and you can see I have this what's called a solenoid these, these uh, one two three four five six seven turns of wire sprinkle a little iron in there and throw the switch you get a current going in there and now I tap tap it and I'll bring it up to the camera and show you what we have I think maybe I need a white backdrop Ah oh, yes, much better. Here we go. Okay. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to go up to the board and describe what it is we just saw there. We had field of a long straight wire. And by the way, this is the kind of thing you should look for some images of. So you have a long straight wire that's carrying a current like this then the magnetic field is these concentric circles. Okay, that's what I claim to have showed you on the first one. The uh, field of a solenoid or seven circular turns That's a solenoid. So we had current going through that, and we're looking at the upper half with the plexiglass. What we saw was a very strong uh, alignment inside those turns. And if you look closely, and of course you can rewind and look closely, you'll see. All right, for the top view, we had, you know, on the plexiglass, we had these turns here. Okay. I'll just put it like that. The point was that we had these, if you look really closely, you saw a little circular um, field arrays where the uh, where this thing went through the plexiglass where the turn went through the plexiglass so these little circular ones that you'll look you'll see if you're looking up closely they are essentially this phenomenon right here so the point of this whole thing is that and that would be this point three right here. Electric currents produce magnetic fields. So you don't need a magnet. If you have a current going through a wire, you're producing a magnetic field. So you can say that's one of the fundamental laws that we're looking at, we'll have four or five. 
So the fifth, the fourth point of these laws of electricity and magnetism is what I'm going to demonstrate next. And like I said, um, we want images of this. Homework. You want to get some good images of these magnetic fields being produced by electric currents. Okay, so let's set up for something else here. Okay, so we're going to bring the magnet back into play. This is a very, very powerful magnet. And I think I'll line it up this way this time. And yeah, maybe at an angle here. Okay, maybe this way. Okay, good enough. This time our project is to run an electric current through that magnetic field. So we know there's a very, very powerful magnetic field right there, okay? Very strong. And what I'm going to do is put run current in this closed loop here. So this is a short-circuited closed loop. And I'm going to run it and hold it between Right now there's nothing. I'm going to hold this wire between the poles of the magnet. So here it goes. Short circuit. Very strong force effect, okay? If I do the other one, okay. So it's interesting, there is that field from one side to the other and you notice a very sharp arcing not not arcing, but arc-shaped thing. So I'm, if we were in, together in class, everybody would be feeling this very strong force on this current carrying wire. Okay. As it is, you'll have to take my word for it. Now it's down because it's a different direction. Okay. Okay. So that's the last of those laws for today. Go back up. So our fourth point here is that magnetic fields act on moving charges and they act on currents. So they act on electric currents. Okay, what do I mean by act on? They produce a force on them. That is the B field, the magnetic field produces a force on a moving charge, not on a charge at rest, on a moving charge, produces a force on a moving electric charge. This gets really interesting mathematically because the law is it's kind of a bizarre one, in fact, but uh, very well describable. Um, you know, I'm just going to put it here, F sub B. This is just for culture since we're not doing this kind of math. But it's equal to Q V vector cross B. This is called the cross product. It's a multiplication of two vectors. Um, 
just to have it here, the vector product. And what it does is it gives all manner of interesting directional information, but in particular, um, if the charge is not moving, the force is zero. So we get this force on a, on a moving electric charge. We literally saw it acting on an electric current, and this is the law that's going to allow us to create motors. Because if we can have an electric current um, in a B field, we, or, we orient it right, we can get things to twist, we can get a torque, and with a torque we can get uh, work and energy. So this is going to be the basis of, of motors. There's one more law I'm going to save for next time, um, but for now you have enough stuff to look up. You know, we have the basic laws, B fields act on electric currents, actually no, I can also or F sub B is equal to current times a length cross B. Okay, we're not doing any math with this, but the point is there is a force. It's equal to the current times a length times this interesting mathematical thing called the vector product into the B field. Okay. And yeah, if you have a force along a length of wire, if the wire is longer, the force is going to be greater. Of course, we don't just make long straight wires, but we wrap them up into uh, coils with many, many turns, and we can get very strong forces, strong torques. Okay, so this is the basis, basis of motors, electric motors. Good, so we'll leave it at that. What did we say? Today was 36th lecture. We have one this week, two next week. So we will be able to demonstrate and tie everything together for motors, generators, transformers, uh, and the electric grid potentially, at which point we really will have tied everything together. Uh, right now we're just in the middle of these abstract laws. We're going to put them in a form where we can talk about motors generation and uh, transformers and therefore the transmission of power as we started with our hydropower all the way to the city. That's our goal. So yeah, just go ahead and look up some of these things so you can get some better images. Uh, again, laws of electricity and magnetism. We've covered electricity, We've talked about magnetism in the field, but these two laws here, that the field, that the currents produce fields, and that the fields act on electric currents with a force, this is going to be the key to everything else. Good? See you guys next time.